Hey, everybody. Welcome to day three of our Passion Week devotions. I'm so glad you're joining us for these. And man, I hope this is ministering to you. And I've got a great word for you today. Today, we're going to talk about day three. We're going to talk about Wednesday. This is Wednesday. And, and, and uh, we're going to talk about how what the major thing Jesus went through on Wednesday and how it prepared him for what was about to happen. But most importantly, we're going to talk about the other person involved in this situation because it was a heart check for this person. Um, I think a lot of times that we go through things that are hard. You know, we talked about this weekend uh, on Sunday, we talked about uh, what James said, count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into different t- trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh perseverance and let perseverance have its complete work that you may lack nothing. And so that you may be mature, that you may grow and that you won't need anything else uh, for the next season of your life, that you'll be that fully grown believer. So we should count it joy. I think when we go through hard things, it, I, honestly, I believe this with all my heart. It's sometimes God uses it to heart check us because the things of the kingdom are not about, um, they're not about so much the externals. They're about the heart. You know, when God chose David as king, his own father didn't even remember him to bring him to the party. You know, when Samuel came and said, I'm going to anoint one of your sons to be king. And he brings all the sons before Samuel and nothing happens. Like this is not him. This is not him. This, do you not have another son? He calls David from the pasture. Think about that. His own father never even crossed his mind that this would be the king, but God saw differently. And, and when, when it was thought of, and the question was asked, it was, declared this way, that God doesn't see on the outward. He, he looks on the inward. He looks on the heart. So a lot of times when we go through hard and difficult times, it's a heart check. In other words, God is allowing us to see the motives of our heart. He's allowing us to see where we really are with things. And my question to you and to myself today, uh, as I'm going through these devotions, these devotions aren't just for you. They're for me too. And as I think about this myself, what has been checked in my heart? during this time? Where, where are some motives in me that aren't right, that need to change? Um, where are some things in me that, man, maybe I'm being prideful about, or maybe I'm not being honest with myself about, or honest with God about? Maybe there's some compromises in my life that years ago, I would never have allowed that, but now we're allowing it. There are things in our life that we know are ungodly, yet we've gotten so used to them that would just continue down that path. And I think what happens is that God sometimes will use trials in our life to check that heart. And that's what was happening here. Now, I'll, I'll explain it to you in just a moment, but let's read it out of, out of Luke chapter 21, uh, excuse me, 22, verse 1 through 6. Okay, Luke chapter 22, verse 1 through 6. This is day three, Wednesday of the Passion Week. And here's what happened. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. So the chief chief priests and scribes wanted Jesus to die. They felt like he was going to steal all their power and their authority, and so they wanted him to die. And they were trying to figure out ways to get rid of him, but they had to kind of be sneaky and conniving because... They knew the people really loved. At this point, they hadn't been able to turn the people's hearts away from Jesus, and they were turned to Jesus. So they were trying to figure out, how can we trip him up? How can we catch him? Then something very interesting happens. Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray them or excuse me, betray Jesus to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude. So heart check time. How did Judas get from the place of being a follower of Christ 
doing miracles like the rest of the 12, preaching the gospel like the rest of the 12, following along Christ's teaching like the rest of the 12, to I'm going to betray him for money. Well, you read it, Pastor. Satan entered into Judas. Well, no, that was only at the time where it tipped over. In order for Satan to do that in Judas, Judas' heart had to be open to that. Judas' mind had to be open to that. Satan can't just come in, take you over, and do things. That ain't the way this works. You have to open up a door for that. And that's exactly what Judas did. Now, let me explain to you, in another gospel, uh, in another one of the gospels, this account is given when Mary comes and anoints Jesus' feet. Now, it was in Simon's house, who Simon was Judas' dad. And so you have to understand, they're in this house. All the disciples were there. They were discussing things. All of a sudden, Mary walks in. She walks in with a, a very costly perfume. It was at, at least one man's wage for a year. This was probably her life savings. This was probably an heirloom given to her as an inheritance. It was very precious, like probably the most precious thing that she had. She walked into the room. I'm sure the room became silent because it was inappropriate for he, her even to interrupt, for her to even sit at his feet. She had done this before, though. If you remember when Martha was all working and Mary was just sitting, she was taking the position of a disciple. And for a woman at that time, that was not right. She was not supposed to do that. That was only reserved for young men. Uh, the rabbis had the Talmudim and they were men. They were not women. And so she was breaking every rule. But she had, he, God had done so much in her life. Jesus had done so much for her. Raised her brother from the dead. I mean, so many other things that she came in and, and in one passage of scripture, it says she broke the bottle. Now that's not what we're focusing on, but I'll, I'll get there. She, in other words, she gave everything she had. So her life, her intentions, her heart, her motives were pure. In other words, she was preparing him. She knew something was about to happen. Somehow she got a revelation that he was going to die. He had been saying it, but no one was getting it except Mary. And we know that because Jesus said that. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. She starts pouring this oil, but the Bible says she broke the bottle, which means she didn't leave room to cork it again. She didn't leave room to some, I'm going to, I'm going to give some of this, but I'm going to reserve some of it. No, her heart was so pure. Her heart was so generous. Her heart was so given to God that she said, I'm giving you all of what I have. And that's what she did. She began to pour this on Jesus. Well, well, obviously the disciples, many of them begin to say, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is ridiculous. You shouldn't do this. This is a waste. Isn't that interesting that she was seeing prophetically what was going to happen to Jesus and preparing him for burial, worshiping him, perfuming his body. Now think about this. This was on that happened on Tuesday night before this Wednesday when Judas determined to go uh, talk to the Pharisees. That happened on Tuesday night that she did this. So by Friday, now think about this, by Friday when Jesus was on that cross, that perfume that she poured over his body, you could still smell it. So think about Jesus as a sacrifice. You know how God, the Bible talks about that our life when we worship and praise God and sa and give our life as a living sacrifice, that it's a holy thing. It's a, it's a, like a sweet smelling savor to God. Just think about Jesus on that cross, people criticizing him, people ridiculing, people mocking him. And he was being a sacrifice for uh, us to God. You could smell that beautiful aroma of Mary's worship on his life. It moves me every time I think about it. That's, that's the power of our worship in a prophetic way. Now listen, her heart was so pure and so right. And here's what happens a lot of times when we engage other people who are like that. It, it heart checks us. And that's what happened in the room. All of a sudden, everybody can begin to say, this is a waste. We could take the money that that, that would bring if you want to give it as an offering, give it to us and we'll put it in the treasury and we can help so many poor people. And Jesus said, Jesus literally rebuked them and said, shut up. She's preparing me. She sees something you don't even see. She's doing something you can't even receive yet. You haven't even got a revelation of yet. And how dare you say that you have poor with you, you could always help. But me, I'll be gone soon. 
And Judas, who was the keeper of the treasure, was the most angry about it because he said, I can't believe you would waste this. You could put it in. But that wasn't the truth. He wasn't worried about the poor at all. The Bible goes on to say that he was the keeper of the treasure and he was an embezzler. His heart was impure. He was trying to, he was a lover of money. He needed money. He needed status. He needed things to make him feel like somebody, to make him feel like he was succeeding, to enrich his life instead of trusting Jesus, instead of his heart being pure. And here's what happened to Judas. He was caught in the balance. His heart was checked. God checked his heart by using Mary to do something that he considered to be a waste. And in that moment, he had a choice to make. He could repent of what he's been doing. He could repent of the compromise that he had. You know that Judas started, he didn't start out doing that. He didn't start out taking from the till. But over time, that happened to him. What compromises have we allowed to get in us? What heart checks are happening in us through this season right now where God's saying, you know, your motives aren't really right. Man, you've been taking shortcuts in this area of your life. Man, is that really, is that, are you really being faithful to your spouse when you do that? Is, is this something that you're going to allow your life to be defined by? Can you feel it? Can you sense it? The heart check that's happening right now through the process of what we're going through. I want you to. I want me to, that if there's anything in us that would be impure, that God would remove it and that we would be healed from it and that we'd be more like Mary instead of like Judas. So when Judas was heart checked, instead of him repenting, he turned and he decided that he thought that Jesus should be a king and take over and overthrow the Roman government and put them all, these 12, into these places of authority. And Judas saw this as something that would enrich him individually and personally. And because it didn't go that direction, and because Jesus rebuked him, instead of repentance, he became rebellious. And he opened his heart. And after it was all over, listen, after it was all over, and Jesus was crucified, and they and he saw what they were really going to do because of the because he traded Jesus for money. He didn't want any part of it. He came to himself. He realized, I have messed up, but it was too late. And Judas' life ended in such dis- disaster and destruction. Listen, as we're being put to the test right now, let's be honest, that's what's happening. How's the heart? How are you internally? How is your relationship with God? What are things that need to go? You know, the Apostle Paul said we should run this race throwing off the weights and sins that so easily beset us. There are things in our life, there are things in our life that may be sin or they may just be weights, things that are holding us down and keeping us from becoming all that what we could be. And we need to take an internal evaluation And not as our heart is being checked, not rebel against God or harden our heart or stiffen our neck, but say to God, here's my, here's my all. I pour it on you. I give it to you. I hold nothing back. And of everything in my heart that may be impure, that may be wrong, that may be compromising, I repent of it in Jesus name. Father, right now we look at these two people side by side, Mary and Judas, and we say, we, we choose Mary. God, and we know that all of us have things in us that probably need to change. Every single one of us, including me and my family and everyone listening and watching in their family. And we give it to you right now. Lord, repentance doesn't mean we're sorry or that we're emotional. It means we're making a decision to turn from things that have gotten in our heart, that have darkened our heart, and turn towards you, the light, so that those things can be exposed and we can turn and follow you 100%. So today, check our heart. And and as you check our heart, let us respond, not with rebellion, but Lord, with total submission. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great evening. Are you hurting and broken within? 
Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, it was. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. And bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born, Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus. Christ and oh what a Savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah Christ is Jesus Christ.